I mean, look, the the tripping over the feet, that's one right there. That that was a tough one because the Sixers had the ball. If you did not watch it, the Sixers were leading. They had a chance there going into the backcourt. Tyrese Maxey was getting the ball in the inbound, but he was moving so fast. He just flat out tripped over his own feet. And with that, the ball goes out of bounds. It goes to the other side, to the Los Angeles Clippers. And then the Clippers get two and ones, as Rich talked about. But the first one, it was just, you're looking at these plays. Myself, Rich, and Bree were sitting there watching it, and the fouls occur. And you're saying, if you're going to foul, foul them harder. Commit the actual foul where there's no and one opportunity. At the very least, they tie the game up. They get the two points at the free throw line. But you, you don't give them a chance to take the free throw after a made basket and get three points on the board where you're now trailing in the game. Then you get a big buddy healed shot where we, Rich is like, no, that's awful offense. <laughs> made the shot. So you're like, okay, great. But that's still awful offense. And then you come back on the other end and Kelly Oubre commits another terrible foul where that's another and one and you don't foul hard enough where they don't get the shot off. And we're, talk we're not talking about just guys. We're talking about Kawhi Leonard. Right. So he was already having a tough game as it was. Yeah, he looks so old for most of the game. And he now you're hundred years old. And now you give game. him a chance. You give him an opportunity where he's in rhythm in the guts of the game. You know, he's going to make these shots. You can't, you cannot allow that happen. So let's start with the Tyrese Maxey play where at that point, the turnover happens and, and he trips over his own feet and we're sitting there. And again, I'm like, how does that happen? Well, he's moving too fast. Sometimes you just lose your balance when you're going as fast as he was. And he trips over his own feet. You commit the turnover right there. And as a result, as things happen, it just starts going haywire. You get bailed out by that Buddy Hill shot. But, Rich, let's start there with the Tyrese Maxey play. That's really where it started to unfold for them. Uh, that was one minute to go. Uh, one, of, well, one minute to go. Uh, he loses the turn over there. Mir Coffee makes one of two free throws. And, and Devon, this is important, though. That what happens after that play, I don't want this to get lost um, because I thought the Sixers, when they were small, when Paul Reed was in, when Mo Bamba was even in, I thought they made so many excellent plays at the rim the night. Just hands plays, efforts, effort plays. Clippers missed a lot of shots around, around the rim, a lot of turnovers, a lot of blocks where I just thought the Sixers – their defensive effort, man, they're playing pretty good defense over the past couple of weeks here. Like you're, you're starting to see some buy-in from this group. Um, and on that play, Kelly Oubre comes out of nowhere and he fouls. I think it was Amir Coffey trying Amir to go, Coffey. For the, yep. go for the dunk. Mm -hmm. um, and Amir Coffey only makes one of two. Yeah. So it, it's part of the Kelly Oubre uh, experience where that dude is just going to play hard as hell at all times. And, and right there, he saves a point because Amir Coffey only makes one of two. But then a couple plays later... You know, the, the Tobias foul was bad. He kind of lost um, lost sight of Kawhi on the first one. A nice little off-ball cut. Um, that that was a, a very nice finish by Kawhi. The second one, the Kelly, when Kelly makes that foul, it's just, you you, you have to hack the hell out of him. You have to. There's, there's no way. If, if Make you, him earn it, man. And, and at the spot where Kelly was at, just let him dunk the ball, man. Like, just let him dunk the ball. You have a chance to win the game. Um, and look, it's the second time. I think there was a game against Atlanta earlier this year. Was it? I'm blanking on the player. It might have been Trey Young. It might have been Murray. It was, it was somebody had a had, or Jalen. I think it was Jalen Johnson actually. Yeah. He had a dunk at the end of the game where Ubre fouled him. They, they were up two, and he yep. fouls him. Yep. Yep. And it's just like not a smart play. And it's it's a killer foul. And I, I really like. I don't want to get. Uh, I don't want to be too hard on Kelly because I I really liked his effort. I thought he did a great job against Harden for most of the game, like the way he was getting around screens. But that was really dumb. <laughs> that was that was really dumb. And, and look, the maxi piece, what did you see there? It looked like he just simply lost his footing, moving too fast, lost his footing, right? That's what you saw there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's funny. Like, he, he probably should lose his footing more considering <laughs> how fast he moves, right? You're right. Look, that's, that's a killer play, and I, I don't really know what else to say about that. Yeah, so uh, first, while, while we were watching it, and it was like, all right, Initially, I'm saying, pass the ball to Tobias Harris in the corner. He's wide open. When we saw the replay, before we get to the whole final shot actually taken by Kelly Oubre, when we saw the replay, you looked at the replay and you saw the ball fake, where he ball faked it to Harris. James Harden, I believe, committed to running and at least closing off that passing lane for Tobias Harris to prevent him from getting the basketball. And look, quite honestly, Kelly Oubre wasn't passing that ball. Kelly Oubre's mentality is... 
I'm doing this on my own. I'm getting this done. That was not happening. So with it, he goes to the basket and he then goes up. And so first thing, would you have still liked him to make that pass as we break it all down? Would you have liked him to make that pass? The ball fake was the ball fake. Forget about the end result. Knowing what you saw on the initial drive, do you feel like he should have made that pass to Tobias Harris in the corner? I mean, probably just considering the amount of time that was sure. on the clock. Five you know, seconds left, right? And then, overall. You know, obviously, there's like a, you know, a car crash at the rim where he doesn't get the shot off. Does he get hit before? Is PG straight up? I don't know. I, I'm less bothered about that. That was a scramble play. I also will say, I, I didn't actually get this on the broadcast. Did Nick Nurse take that time out at the end? At was, the end. I'm looking at the at the play-by-play. You know, ESPN didn't do a great job of kind of... It ex- sounded ex- like they said he was taking the time out. It sounded like it. Well, it says it on the play-by-play that he did. Uh, you know what would have been nice, Devon? Take that time out with 17 seconds to go well, <laughs> when they well, were bringing the football up the floor. Even if Batum got it at the end and he was like falling out of bounds, call time call out, time out. Run a play. You Dang. got like three, four seconds left. It'll be... I don't know. And Nick Nurse was emotional about the uh, he, what he thought was a foul. I believe he said call the effing foul at the yes, ref. Did yes. not get teed up yep. uh, for that. Uh, he shouldn't have, obviously. Um, but he emotionally calls a timeout. Like, did he think he was going to challenge the, uh, you know, the, I, I the wonder, jump ball? Yeah, exactly. Because you had no more timeout. So once you call that timeout, you cannot call a challenge because your challenge is part of the your final timeout that you have. And the officials are not going to go to the to the back to Secaucus and look at things to see if you can overturn it. And, and that was a wild thing there. But as far as going back to the play, then the car crash at the rim, as you <laughs> talked about, it looked, look, we complain about the officials. Some, most of the times we don't complain about the officials. We just let things happen the way that they happen. There were some questionable things there. The Kelly Oubre turnover on the sideline, Paul George hits the ball out of his hands after a good defensive play by the Sixers outlet to him. And Oubre, I don't. We didn't get the view that they got. We didn't feel like it was it was conclusive enough to overturn the initial call, which was Sixers basketball. Let's go the other way. They overturn it, saying it went off of basically pushing it the rest of the way out of the bounds by Kelly Oubre off of the good defensive play by Paul George, as it turns out, because they call it what they call. But that looked questionable right there. And then you had a few more things that ultimately came down to the final play, which was. Kelly Oubre goes to the basket. Looks like he's going up. Body contact as he goes to the rim. Paul George, though, goes hands up, straight up, elevates, doesn't move forward, doesn't bring his hands down, doesn't jump his body into Kelly Oubre. He just jumps. They don't call foul. Game over. That's why the Sixers were irate at the end. They were irate. I think it was a bang, bang kind of play of how you're going to go for it. (laughs) Rich thinking about it. Now, it looks like because when we did see the replay a few more times there, and I would love to see what the people thought in the chat because there are already pit people coming at the officials saying they robbed them there tonight. It looked like when you call, you were letting the, the players decide the game at that moment, and Paul George did the right defensive thing of going straight up with the arms up to avoid any further contact than what the contact was going to be initiated by the offensive player driving into the defensive player and that's why there was a no call. I so so let's get to the refs because you, you're right, and, and and there was a lot in that. It was in a that, lot. That final. There was a lot. Um, I think the reason people probably feel cheated. It starts with as you said the the play where we were watching it. The ball, George knocks it out of of Ubre's hand, and I I think like again ESPN did not give us like a great angle they on did that. Not. They did. Uh, not. And I you know I saw a lot of people saying okay it rolled off Kelly's. Uh, finger, Devon. I'm gonna say to the to everybody watching right now what I said to you. I absolutely hate those type of reviews. First off, it took five minutes. It should not take five minutes uh, in that spot. Uh, number two, like the plays that get challenged, the out of bounds plays in the final minute. Like if that play happens in the first half, if it happens in the third quarter, Ty Lue, he's not even complaining about it. He's not even thinking about challenging it, but. In the final minute, then we we get out the microscope and we look. Oh, uh, who did who did the ball go <laughs> off of? And I hate it. It's it's so bad. I hate it. And and the other thing too, just as like somebody like when, when we're playing pickup, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the the ball is always out on Paul George. It's always out on the guy who is like knocking it out. Yeah. And because of replay, we have changed that rule because like 
when we slow it down, it actually goes off the guy's finger at the final second. It is, it is so annoying. I hated that. The Sixers did not deserve to lose the ball there, but that is how it's happened. I, and you know what? You've followed it probably a little closer than me, man. I feel like I watched these Sixers games. I feel like they're just getting absolutely killed on reviews this year. Like the other team. I would agree. Yeah. Their percentage is not good. No, it's not. It's It's their reviews don't work. Like nurse is getting more emotional and the other team, I feel like they always have this super high leverage play where they're like, oop, we're going to review that one. And it goes against them. And I just feel like it's Groundhog Day, man. I keep watching it and it's like, oh man, that's another killer call that goes on a review against them. So that one what was bad. Um, I would say on the two drives for Ubre, right? The, the drive on the, uh, on the first play where it turns into a jump ball. I think you see the difference between Kawhi Leonard's experience and I mean, Kelly Oubre, he's got a lot of experience, but <laughs> his his lack of basketball IQ and big sure. spots, like yeah. Kawhi knows how to play physical and knows that the ref is going to swallow the whistle in that spot if you play it a certain way. If you, you know, continually give a little bit of contact on that drive. Now, again, we got the above angle from ESPN, so I can't speak to like, did he get him on the wrist? Couldn't really see too much of that there. But that's like how a veteran handles those situations. Meanwhile, Kelly Oubre comes flying from a mile away and gives like, Minimum contact, frankly, pushes Kawhi, who can't jump over a phone book right now, uh, pushes him to the other side and gives him the angle to make that lefty layup, yep. that below the rim finish. I think you kind of see the difference in uh, in winning time there. No, and, and I like look, I, I get why the Sixers are frustrated, but to me, it comes back to that first call. That's the one where I'm thinking, like, come on, what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah, just some tough ones down the stretch. And look, man, the chat is real active with he was fouled, he wasn't fouled, he was fouled twice. So this is this is where we all see the same thing, but we see it differently uh, there in the end. And that's what makes the conversation just great. We all city like the mayor. 